Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to part four, no, five, I think five, to our auto runner or penguin sledding tutorial series. In this video, we're going to add our double jump, and we're going to add in coyote time. Just a little bit of polish, add in the double jump mechanic, and then, and then the coyote time. So let's start with the double jump. So we'll come into our player character, and at the very start, top of our player character script we're going to add a variable called air jump and we're just going to set it to false no true i'm going to set it to true so if we have an air jump then we want to be able to air jump now when can we air jump this is going to be inside of our physics process right here so inside of here but also when we're in the air right if we're already on the floor we just want to do a normal jump so if we're in the air we'll do our air jump so we'll say right here kind of want to actually separate out this logic with a space there we go and then we'll say if input dot input dot is action just pressed UI up and air jump. Then we're going to say velocity dot Y equals, and I don't actually remember this force. Looks like I actually have it set to the exact same amount as a normal jump. So we'll say velocity dot Y equals negative jump force. Just like that. However, I set up the game to punish the player for double jumping. It's kind of like a speed game and a double jump should be a last resort for your character and shouldn't be used all the time. I didn't want the character double jumping all the time. So we actually slow down the character's x velocity. Velocity.x minus equals, um, and I have, I think this is set to unjump force. So we're actually subtracting the unjump force when we do an air jump like this. But this is another case where we should be multiplying by delta. So let's have a double jump. Let's have a new variable here. Export var double, or we'll call it air jump speed reduction and we'll set this equal to what's the math the unjump force which is 25 times 60 right and then we'll just evaluate this which is going to be 150 uh, or 1500 right evaluate section yeah 1500 and then we'll do uh, so our air jump, see because it's plus equals here, we need to, um, where is the air jump? Right here. Because it's minus equals here, we need to multiply by delta. So we'll say air jump speed reduction yeah, times delta. I think that should work. And then we want to remove our air jump. Air jump equals false, just like that. Now we'll set our air jump back to true whenever we're on the ground. So if is on floor, air jump equals true. We'll add it back, set it back to true whenever we're on the ground. There we go. You can see it really slows down the character to use that double jump. And there we go, that's exactly what we wanted. Now, we want to actually animate this double jump so that it looks cool, because right now it doesn't look very cool. And we can do this, we're going to animate it using tweens. So tweens are super useful in Godot and we can very easily create a tween in code by saying var tween equals create tween 
just like this. And then we can use that tween to interpolate properties. So this is a way of doing interpolation similar to what we did with lerp, but we're able to get a little bit more control over it. So we're gonna do, we're gonna have our character do a whole backflip. And we can do this, but we're gonna need to do it in two steps in order to make sure that our character is rotating um, correctly. Because if you just, if you just tween, uh, I think we have to do it in two steps. Now I'm not sure. Let's try it in one. And if it doesn't work in one, then I'll be right. And we'll have to do it in two. But let's start by saying tween.tween property. And we're going to tween the rotation of our sprite, the sprite 2D. So we have to pass in the object that we're going to tween and now the property, which is rotation degrees. And this has to be a string, which is a little bit annoying, but it is what it is. We can make it work. We're going to go, um, we want to tween to zero. And we're going to do it over the course of four seconds or a four tenths of a second, so 0 0.4. And we want to tween from, so we can pass in a from amount here. Uh, let's see, we should be able to tween from our current amount. No, we might have to, we might have to do, because our, thir our current amount is going to be clamped between 30. So I think we would do, 360 on top of our current amount. So 360 plus sprite 2D dot rotation degrees. So we're taking, we're adding 360 to our current amount and we're rotating back to zero. Okay, so that's, that's how we want to tween. Whoops, I didn't want to press that. Run out of real estate here. It's annoying, but. And then we have to do tween dot play like this, and that will start the tween. So it should happen only when we double jump. Hey, it worked. That's cool. Awesome. There we go. I was wrong. We don't have to do it in two. I could just be smart and do it in one. And I'm not 100% sure about the math here. <laughs> the 360 degrees. So um, 360 is obviously a full rotation. So we're adding a rotation plus our current amount. But you can't see that in game because that ends up being the exact same amount, the exact same angle that we're at. It just has 360 added onto it technically, and then we rotate back to zero. Um, I think the math is good here though, and it looks good, so maybe I shouldn't overthink it, right? Yeah, that looks good. Okay, now we're gonna do coyote time. And I'm just gonna create a variable for this. We could use a timer. But I find that it's actually pretty easy to just use a variable. So we'll create a new variable called coyote time. Right here, we'll set this equal to 0, 0.0. And we're going to, in our, in our physics process, on every frame, we're going to add to this variable. So coyote time plus equals delta. And that just means that our coyote time is adding the amount that the, the time that the last frame took every single frame. So it's basically keeping track of time, right? Coyote time is keeping track of time. Now what we can do is we can go into our, our jump and let me find this in my reference code here. But essentially when we're jumping, we can check to see if we're on the ground and we can also check to see, uh, or we can check to see if coyote time is less than some, some amount, right? So do we want coyote time? I think we can just put it here. 
So if is on floor or coyote time is less than or equal to 0 0.15. Okay, so coyote time is going to be constantly adding. But if it's less than this amount, then we can, we can jump. So, if is on floor, yeah, that or coyote time is less than this, yes. So, it's constantly adding, but if we leave a ledge, we want to set our coyote time back to zero. That way, every frame it adds up again, but then this is basically the time frame that we're allowing, 0 0.15. That's how long we're allowing you to jump after leaving a ledge. But we have to detect when you've left a ledge and set coyote time back to zero because, right, it's starting right here. Um, technically, yeah, that's fine. So then, so then we can come down here and this is where we're going to detect if we've actually left a ledge. So we can do this by creating a variable after we move called just left ledge. So var just left ledge or Jeff just left. Yeah, ledge is fine. So we need a variable called was on floor. And this variable is kind of like previous velocity in the sense that we need to access information before moving. So we'll create a variable called was on floor. And we'll set this equal to is on floor. Okay, so we were on the floor. Now we can create just left ledge variable. We can set it equal to was on floor and not is on floor. Okay, the problem with that is that if we jump, if we just press the jump button, then this will be true. And we didn't leave a ledge, we just jumped. So how do you know if you've left a ledge? Well, it's if you, if you were on the floor, but you're no longer on the floor, and your y velocity is greater than or equal to zero. So and y, or velocity dot y is greater than or equal to zero. This is how, this logic right here is how we can tell if we just left a ledge. All of these things have to be true. We were on the floor, we're no longer on the floor, and our velocity dot y is greater than or equal to zero. Then we can just say if just left ledge, coyote time equals zero. Now let's see if this works. Feels like it is. Yeah. Yeah, there's quite a bit of leniency there. And you can choose how much coyote time you have. So let's actually add an export variable here. Export var coyote time amount. And I'm going to set this equal to 0 0.15. Now you could alter coyote time amount. You could alter this value in order to be more or less lenient. And I'm going to let you mess around with that for whatever feels best for you. But I do think this feels pretty good already. It's just enough to where if you accidentally leave a ledge and then jump, you still are able to jump and it feels good. So that's going to be it for this lecture. For this video, I should say, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it and learned something, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. If you're interested in more of my Godot content, I have a Godot course bundle on my website, which includes the one bit Godot course, my new action RPG course, and a practical pixel art course for game developers. Uh, so you can check that out. There'll be a link in the description and I will see you all in the next video.